I'm going to attempt to survive 100 days in an African safari, all whilst trying to defend myself from the hostile creatures that lurk through this savanna, like lions, rhinos, hippos, and so many more animals. Will I be able to capture these guys and start my own safari? Let's find out. And if you go on to enjoy this video and want to join me on more of my 100 days adventures, remember to subscribe. It is completely free and these videos take a super long time to make, so I'd really appreciate it. Now sit back, relax, and get ready for an adventure. This is 100 Days in an African Safari. Alright, so, day one. Straight away, I spotted my first threat. A bloat of hippos were in the lake right next to my spawn point. And as I looked the other way, I saw some elephants too. So with all of these possible hostile creatures around, I decided to grab up some wood so that I could make some tools. And as I continued to adventure, I spotted a campsite over the mound. So grabbed up one last tree and then headed over to check it out. Inside was not too much great loot, but as I left, I realized that those elephants were moving in and I know that these guys can charge me and kill me in one hit if they want to. So I made sure to stay well away from him before I died on day one. As I left, I realized that there was some smoke coming from a campfire in the near distance. But as I approached it, I saw a camper inside. These campers are quite territorial, so if I go anywhere near this thing, he will start chasing me down to try and kill me, and I have nothing to defend myself for now. So instead of taking this guy on, I decided once again to walk away and went to a cave to grab up some stone so I can make those tools that I needed. When I left the cave, I looked over the lake and saw that it was absolutely infested with hippos, and the first thing that came to mind was calling this place Hippo Lake. So that's its new name. And with the sun setting into the distance, the savannah can get super cold at night, so I decided to head back to that abandoned orange tent that I had found and set up there since not only do I have to drink to stay alive, but I also have to keep warm or cool off in this world. So I set up a quick farm and then headed to sleep for the night. When I woke up, I knew that if I was going to be living in this tent for now, I would need a door since the open nature of this tent will not protect me from anything, especially if I'm trying to take cover inside of it. And with that done, it was time to set off in the wilderness to try and find some food since I was going to start getting hungry soon. Less than 50 blocks away from my house, I spotted a lion sleeping, and the last thing I want to do is wake her up or else I would be chased until I was dead. So I quietly snuck past and spotted a gazelle that I was able to hunt down instead. After killing it, unfortunately this little guy didn't drop any meat, but I continued my hunt later into the day and stumbled across some emus, which did fight back, but the rest of the mob ran away in fear of me, so I couldn't get them. But since the sun was once again setting and the nights out here in the wild can be super dangerous, I decided to start making my way home. And on the way, I spotted yet again another sleeping lion, which is very lucky since if it was awake, this video would end pretty quickly. But I arrived back at Hippo Lake just as the sun was setting, so headed into my tent to sleep off the night and prepare for day three. And day three was spent entirely grabbing wood for fences. Those lions, rhinos, and hippos like to roam around, and if they roam over towards my tent, I want fencing to keep them out. So I spent all day farming up some wood, and on day four got right to work getting the perimeter set up. Which on day 5 was slightly interrupted, because I had a new problem. I hadn't had anything to drink since starting this challenge, so I desperately needed some leather to make myself a water canteen so that I could drink. So I left the camp to hunt down some zebras. Yes, I said zebra, not zebra. Don't comment about it. And after killing a few, I ran into a rhino. And I can tell you guys right now, these are not friendly, and if you get too close to their land, they will charge at you. So I decided to steer away from him and ventured deeper into the wild to hunt down some more zebras. And I did this all the way into the night. But once I had enough leather, I returned home and slept so that in the morning I could make myself a canteen, purify some water and then replenish my thirst. Now that that issue had been dealt with, it was time to get back to chopping trees and making myself a fence all around my land. I chopped trees honestly for a while since I only had stone tools, but I got very lucky since on day 8 when the fencing was finally complete all around my land, a lion showed up outside of my area which would have definitely killed me if the fences weren't up as protection. So as I hid inside of my tent, I realized I still had no armor. And if I'm going to be exploring a safari, it's probably best if I get some. So decided it was now time to head into the mines. 
I made a very small staircase downwards and I got super lucky and mined straight through a mine shaft. Which, after taking care of the many mobs inside, was full of iron for me to dig up and resurface with. So I spent a few days down here, but on day 14 I returned home and started to cook up all of my iron. And at the quickest opportunity, I crafted up some armor. Now, I felt ready and protected enough to take on that camper who was living a little bit away. So I geared up and headed out. As I approached, I was ready for the worst, since I didn't know what this guy was capable of. But luckily, he was only able to get one hit on me before I took him down. So, of course, a hungry boy like me took the opportunity to steal his carrots. And it was only right to feed his elephant, since unfortunately, it doesn't seem like the camper is going to be feeding him anytime soon. So, I headed home and thought my plan out. It seemed more lions were rolling through my area each day. So I decided to make a strengthened bow to help me take them down from a distance because it doesn't take a genius to know that you don't want to take on a lion in a hand-on-hand -hand combat fight. So after a good night's sleep, I left the campsite and headed out to try and find some chickens since I needed their feathers for arrows. I left for very few seconds before a lion had picked up my scent and was hunting me down. But due to these big cats being super stealthy, I had no idea the hunter was being hunted. And as I was taking down some emus, which would also give me feathers, this guy was now right on my tail. Before I knew it, he was pouncing on me. He put me on one heart, so I knew it was time to run. I spotted a village in the distance, so I headed straight there. This guy was quick, so I zigzagged and luckily made it to the house just in time. But he was not giving up. I had to think on my toes to create a trap to kill him. And as I left cautiously, I realized the threats had now been neutralized, for now. And with that experience behind me, I decided to start heading home. And I found some chickens on the way back that I was able to lure home to breed for infinite arrows. So the next day, these chicks got trapped in. And as I was waiting for them to grow later in the day, a horde of pillagers rolled through the area. So the next morning, once the hippo that was stood between me and them cleared the path over towards them, I went straight at them and took them out. I wouldn't say I'm ready at all for a raid at the moment, so I'll just let the bad omen sit waiting for now. And to end off day 18, I did a little bit of research and found out that elephants are actually friendly and breedable with acacia blossom, which is something I actually had some of. So I decided to head over to the campus site and lured his elephants back home to keep them safe and ready for when I start making my own enclosures. These things were so cool. But then, day 19 started a new chapter of this world. I knew that I didn't want to live in a tent for the entire 100 days of this journey, so I started working on my own safari house, which after 14 days of hard work, building, and resource gathering was complete. On day 34, it was looking amazing in the sun, and now it was time to start moving everything from my tent into the new house. And after moving everything, I was watching the sunset and decided it was time to tame myself an elephant. So I headed out with some more acacia blossom that I had gathered whilst chopping trees and fed the elephants. Before I knew it, this guy was mine and I was able to ride him around. This is so cool. I'm literally riding an elephant. I never thought I would do this in Minecraft. So after I calmed down about being able to ride an elephant, I got right back to work. Since I'm now one third of the way through this 100 day adventure and I still have the ambitions of creating my own safari. So I spent a couple of days chopping down trees so that I could make more fences for the future enclosures. And whilst I was doing this, I did some more research and found out that hippos become friendly and won't attack me as long as I feed them watermelons. 
So after spending a few days chopping wood, I went over to a hippo and tested this theory. It turns out that it was right, and this hippo was clearly hungry since he was trying to eat the melons that were already growing from my farm. So, with this tested, I knew that these guys were safe to be around, so I could start working on getting them into their own enclosure. The next day, I made a cage trap, which basically makes transporting animals so much easier by just boxing them into a cage so that I can pick them up and transport the block. So I decided to test it out on the hippo, and it worked just how I expected, allowing me to transport these guys wherever I want with ease. So with that in mind, it was time to start working on my first enclosure, entirely for hippos. I built all through the day, and as I added the fences to the back of this place, I looked at the hippo lying there on the floor, and realized that this guy really needs water in the enclosure that he will be in, and the one I'm making right now didn't have any water at all, meaning that this guy does not belong in here. So I walked over to the hippo lake and realized this is where the hippo exhibit should be, so that they can have all of this entire lake to swim around with and breed loads of hippos. But since I had already built this little cage for something, I decided to grab the elephants that I borrowed from the camper earlier and took them to that cage. But since elephants are much bigger than hippos, I had to expand the walls of this place up to make sure that the elephants couldn't escape. And when they were finally in, I added some food, water, and a little tree for them to eat the leaves from. And then on day 41, with all of the wood I gathered earlier, it was time to start outlining the hippo lake with fences. Not only to keep the hippos trapped in, but also to keep them safe, since these guys can be killed by mobs. I really didn't realize this lake was as big as it was, meaning that this took so much longer than I expected. But by day 43, I had the fence completely finished all around the lake, and it was time to start setting the hippos free, and let them start breeding. But at the moment, I only had two hippos, so I set out on a mission to try and locate some more to relocate into my lake. But instead, as I was just heading out, I was greeted by some more pillagers that really wanted to fight me. This was the third wave of pillagers that I have ran into, and I still haven't started a raid. But anyway, I went out to grab some hippos, and I really thought it would be easier to find some. I was running for so long before I even found one, but I was able to catch two in the entire day and bring them all the way home to plonk in the pond. When I put them in, I tried to breed them, but that was when I realized I had four male hippos, which of course is impossible to breed with. So I had to set off on day 44 to get a female hippo. Is a female hippo a hippa? Or is it still a hippo? I'm just gonna call it a hippo to be on the safe side. But eventually I was able to find myself a female hippo and I spent the rest of day 44 making a melon patch inside of their area and feeding them all to make sure that they were breeding. And wow, that female hippo did a great job, because after just two days, their population had almost tripled. So I just kept this process going on as I decorated my area with lights, paths, and more fences. But then as I was adding a path towards the hippo lake, I ran out of lanterns and had no iron left. So I had to go mining once again to grab a little bit of iron to make myself some more lanterns so that I could light up the entire lake. I spent a few days down here and was even able to get my hands on my first few diamonds. And on the early morning of day 54, I resurfaced to head home with my iron so that I could start to illuminate the lake. This took a while, but honestly the final result looked so good and it was so worth it. So since now that was done, it was time to head back out with my traps to try and get some more animals for my enclosures. I spotted some emus but had a super hard time trapping them in, so I had to wait for quite a while before I could even get one of them. And then once I had one, I made a quick move on the second to get him trapped in. And with my two new emus, I headed home, made a fenced off area, and then let these two emus out of their cage. Yeah, I'm not sure why I got emus, so with them being a huge disappointment and honestly being the most useless mobs, 
I set back off into the wild to try and find something better. The first thing I saw was a crocodile lurking in the grass. I remember when researching this mod seeing that they do a lot of damage, so I stayed far away from that guy. I ran into a black panther, so made sure that I had the upper hand this time, and made sure that I hunted him before he hunted me and took him on head to head, and luckily I was the one that came out on top, so I was able to continue with my adventure. Which on the next day resulted in me spotting a rhino in the distance. This is something I definitely want on my safari, so I had to approach it carefully and lure him into the trap by aggravating him. As mentioned earlier, these things are very dangerous, so I had to be careful. But with one rhino in the bag, it was time to try and find myself one more to take back to the campsite and make an enclosure for. And there it was, on day 58, a female rhino right near a campsite. So I rushed up on her and trapped her straight away before she had the chance to fight back. And whilst I was there, I made sure to pay a visit to the camper and stop by for some tea before heading back home with my two new rhinos. When I returned home, I had a few visitors waiting for me. A pack of tigers and lions had moved into my area whilst I was away. And just over in the distance, I spotted a wandering elephant trader, so quickly made a bolt over to him to check out his loot. Inside of his chest, he had a banana, which I didn't even know existed. So I decided to feed it to the wild elephant and then started planting some trees on my way back. As I was doing this, I completely missed a bear hiding in the grass and was attacked out of nowhere. As I ran, I accidentally woke up the tiger and had to climb the acacia tree in my house to get to safety. And once one of the tigers was awake, the rest of the pack showed up, waiting for me below my balcony. So I couldn't live the rest of this video in my house, so it was time to head down and face these guys head to head. But luckily I had my fence to use as cover. I did have to use myself as bait a few times to lure them closer, but after quite a long battle with these guys, the coast was clear and I was able to start working on my rhino cage. I had a super cool design in mind, which didn't really end up being the final result, but either way, I was super happy with how this build turned out and it will definitely make sure that the rhinos don't escape and cause havoc around the rest of my village. So on day 67, I let these guys free and they looked right at home in here. But to get these guys breeding, I once again had to head over to the hippo lake to grab some melons. And I tell you what, this place was thriving. There were so many hippos here now. But with the melons I needed, I headed back and started the breeding process. And when I returned later in the day, there was now a baby rhino in here. Well, after I left the baby rhino, I decided to head back towards that village that I used for protection when being hunted by a lion earlier, because I wanted to start trading with some villagers. Not only for emeralds and XP, but also because the villagers are able to trade arrows, bolts, and crossbows, which is something that will really help me to defend from all of the hostile creatures out in the wild. But I had to check that these villagers were actually still living here and hadn't been killed by angry rhinos, and thankfully that wasn't the case. So with trading on my mind, I needed wood, and lots of it so that I could trade with these dudes for some weapons. Now I may have made a slight mistake by hitting a hippo and chopping some trees, so I had to take upwards into the heights of them just to make sure that I wasn't going to get chomped in half by these guys, who were quite annoyed at me hitting them. But eventually I had more than enough wood to head over to the village, make a Fletcher villager and trade with this guy. And I did this for a while, like three days straight I traded for villagers. 
I was getting so much XP. And of course, the main goal here was to upgrade these guys so that I could get better trades when they were masters, which came on day 72. They were offering enchanted diamond strength and crossbows, and balls, which are literally the best thing to help me defend myself at the moment. And once that was done, I was just a boy with a load of XP and a crossbow, so I started working on an enchantment table so that I could spend all of my XP levels. Since I'm on day 72 on this video, and I still have unenchanted iron armor, but because well, yeah, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I used my only sugar cane on the book for the enchantment table, meaning that on day 73, I had to set off back out into the savannah to try and locate some more sugar cane. Along the way, I found this guy. Look at him. It's a rhino. I'm gonna call this guy James. Well, I decided to kill James. I wanted to see what I would get from killing a rhino, and considering this guy wasn't my rhino, I wasn't too bothered about killing him. And I'm glad I did, because I got some super high quality meat from this guy that heals 6 hunger bars once cooked. But moving past that, I did have to spend a night out here in the cool plains, but when I woke up in the morning, I found a new lake that had some sugarcane next to it, that I was able to start taking home. Now remember how I just killed that rhino? Well, I wanted to try the same thing with a wild hippo. But he had a rhino friend right next to him that I accidentally shot when trying to take out the hippo. And then I was getting outnumbered by these guys, and the rhino decided to charge me, but luckily I was able to dodge his strike and then take him down. Then it was just me and the hippo. Both of these guys dropped the same super high quality meat, so I made sure to keep that safe and then headed home to start my own sugarcane farm. So I spent a few days farming up sugarcane and then decided to grab myself some cows for leather since I'd much rather have my own cow farm than go out to hunt down a bunch of horses, zebras and cows to get the leather that I needed. So I spent a few days following the same cycle of farming sugarcane and breeding the cows before I had a good enough amount to make some books, turn them into bookshelves and then make my enchanting setup. Unfortunately, the first time I was a few shelves short from maxed out, so I had to do some more killing, but was finally able to get a level 30 enchantment table after a few days of work. And the first enchant on my saber was insane, and my pickaxe was just as good. These were possibly the best enchants I could have gotten on these things. So especially with my pickaxe enchantment, I knew this was my best opportunity to get full diamond armor before the end of this video. So decided to go strip mining to get some. As expected, the mines were very hot, so I had to make sure I kept cooling myself off with my water bucket before I died. And along the way, I found a bunch of diamonds. Luckily, my fortune came in huge help and allowed me to leave the caves with 51 diamonds, which is more than enough for a full armor set. And as I came up, it was night time, so I took care of a few mobs lurking around my area and then made myself some diamond armor, because on day 90, it was time for another adventure. But this time, I wanted to take Ethan the Elephant out with me. Say hi to him in the comment section down below. So I gave him a cool red carpet design and set off to adventure. Along the way, we stopped off at a few campsites, and I even got into another fight with a camper at one point. But after spending one night away from home, I hadn't found anything interesting, so I decided to return home with Ethan. And on the way back, I was greeted by some pillagers. So after taking down my fifth wave of them, I finally decided it was time for a raid. So I set off to find a village, and on the way there, I said hello to another wandering elephant trader. But after a little adventure, I found a new village that didn't contain my trader villagers and started a raid there. When I started this, I had no idea it was going to take as long as it did. Due to the terrain and savannas being strange, I had to deal with a load of pillagers hiding underground, in caves, and walking off trying to kill emus for some reason. And the Ravengers seemed to be doing so much more damage than usual, but luckily, my crossbow came in huge help.
With my shaders, it was near impossible to see these guys hiding in the depths of the cave, but I was able to get my first totem of undying and continue with the raid after taking them out. After a few more waves, it seemed all of the evokers wanted to spawn in the cave down below, so I had to venture in. And thanks to my quick reflexes and three totems of undying, I was able to clear it out, but I almost died so many times. So there I was, even though this wasn't my village, I was the hero of this village, because I saved them from one of the most intense raids I had ever been a part of. So with only 6 days left until day 100, I still wanted to do a few more things with my safari, and one of those things was to make a visitor village, so that if I ever get anybody else on this world for maybe a 200 days part 2 of this series, they can live in a house, nearby, in the safari, and be protected from all of the other lions and tigers that are going to be in this world. So I started chopping down some trees, got a load of wood and started working on my own safari village. On day 96 I completed my first house, which was very long but it looked alright. And then I decided to make two more huts with a similar style right next to it. I got super lucky when building these huts because a crocodile snuck up on me just as I was building up in the air and was able to take him down with a crossbow. And once he was down, I continued to build all through the day and night to get this village complete before the end of the video. On day 97, I did some pathing over to this place and added some fences, but then realized I wanted to make a gazelle field around here. Since there are a bunch of gazelles roaming around this world, I want my own little field with my own gazelles. So I set out to try and trap some in. These guys were much easier to trap than the emus because they didn't run away from me when I got near them. So I was able to grab two of them super quickly and then return them all the way back to the little cage that I had made to put them in. But since this thing was actually really small when I put them in and realized, I decided to make a slight expansion further back so that they had more room in here. And then after that on day 99, I went around and added some lighting to this place because when it went to night on day 98, it got really dark. And of course, I couldn't let the gazelles sit in the dark either, so I had to give them some light too. But then, as nighttime finally rolled around, it was the night of day 99. The final day of this challenge was about to be over. And there it was, 100 days in a African safari. I had survived the hardest of challenges. Up against rhinos, lions, hippos, and so much more. I had made my own safari with so many different enclosures full of different animals for me to look back on and enjoy. If you guys did enjoy this video and want to see a part 2, I will do it if this video hits 10,000 likes. And maybe I will bring somebody with me along for the journey. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed 100 days in an African safari. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.